Hi, well, here we are at the uh, Turkey Hill Conservation Area. It was um, uh, bought by the town of Ipswich uh, well, about 10 or 12 years ago. I think it actually goes back to 2006, and then they set up the trail after a few years after that. So it's about a mi one mile loop. Uh, you can see it here on, on this nice uh, informational board, it tells you all about it. Um, one thing I like about this, it's so close to town. We're, we're right off, of, uh, we're on Pine Swamp Road here, and it's maybe a half a mile up from, from the intersection with Lion Brook. So what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna walk up the trail. First of all, it's an easement that gets you actually to Turkey Hill. Uh, so we'll be walking it between private properties, so we wanna stay on that. Along the way, I wanna talk a little bit about some, uh, a few interesting ge geological features that I've noticed. Then we're gonna cross over to one of the newest conservation areas in town, which is Cayman Farm. Uh, recently purchased by Essex County Greenbelt and at the end we'll just walk right back down Pine Swamp Road which is actually a beautiful road just to walk on any time of day with your dog or whatever. So let's get started. So this is where the trail uh, gets steep and as a matter of fact just up ahead it splits and you go around the hill. But what I wanted to show you is right over here I talked about the sand and how the glacier sort of sorts out uh, different kinds of glacial till. So the next heaviest would be after sand would be the gravel. So look at this. <laughs> right here, we're standing on the edge of a, of a depression. Uh, and this really looks to me like it was a, um, a gravel pit. Uh, we know there were a lot of gravel pits in this area of Ipswich. So for example, Washington Street um, the, one of the earliest names for it was Gravel Street. So just about where um, some of those roads head up across from the car wash, um, that was at the end of Liberty Street, that was just a gravel pit there. And uh, this, this is very close, close to that spot. So it looks like it was all dug out, but then you look right there in the middle of the former gravel pit and there's this rock and that's called the glacial erratic. We we're just full of glacial erratics all over all over uh, New England, especially when you get out to Rockport and Gloucester, but we have plenty of them right here. Um, that's basically what what um, these drumlins are made of, is rocks that were pushed forward uh, during the glaciation. do a little descent because there's a ravine up ahead. Uh, this whole area is a watershed. Uh, it's a very important watershed for Ipswich because um, it's sort of a dividing line uh, between the, uh, the Ipswich River watershed and uh, the uh, uh, Parker River watershed to the north. Uh, and the rain that falls on one side of this might go in a different, of this hill might go in a different direction. It is, what I understand is that the rain that falls on the other side uh, might end up over at Mile, mile Lane at the, uh, at, you know, in that, in that part. And this here will perhaps go down to Dow Brook. As a matter of fact, this ravine here is one of those little creeks. And we're gonna go check out a reservoir on, on that creek. So there's a little pond here, right? We wouldn't expect it on, uh, way up on a hill. Uh, it's actually a little reservoir. It's, uh, the, the, it's, uh, it's private property, but there is just a little side trail here. We can, ch we can take a look at how that pond is formed. It appears to me, and I don't know the history of this pond, and, um, uh, I see I see a wooden uh, beams going across. It looks like it is actually a wood. It started out as a, a wooden uh, dam reservoir, uh, but what I'm standing on right here is probably a spillway that was constructed later. Concrete, nice solid railing, and when you look uh, through, there's not a whole lot of water running through it, but there's a, there appears to be some cracks where the, there's a, a nice trickle a trickle of water. Uh, going down. The really nice thing is that all this water up here, and you can see it down below, it slowly sinks into the ground and refreshes our aquifers. Without this preservation land here in Ipswich, uh, we would be just that um, m much uh, less assured that we have enough water uh, in our summer. So that's why it's really important that in Ipswich we have 50%, even over 50% of our land uh, preserved for, for uh, 
uh, for conservation. So we, uh, we came back up just a little bit from the pond and uh, in case you're a little out of breath or something, this is a great place to stop. And you can take a look at this tree while you're doing it and ponder how did it ever uh, get in this shape. Uh, it appears that, it's, that it fell from over there. And this, is a, uh, this tree has grown in a spiral its entire life. The grain wraps around and around like a pretzel. So I'm wondering how this happened. Um, I googled, of course, like we all do. And um, the, the primary reason this happens with trees is that one side of the root system uh, for some reason or another will uh, maybe be uh, and a rock will be embedded on that side of the roots and it won't be receiving enough water and so what trees do certain species in particular is they twist themselves and somehow <clears throat> the act of twisting um, uh, allows the the uh, uh, the tree to to nourish itself on all sides don't ask me how but that's what that's what the experts say so looking over there i see the tree looks like it fell uh, between um, two large rocks. I'm guessing that one of those rocks probably was encumbering its uh, source of, of, of water on one side. <clears throat> well, it's just a stone wall and you know New England is full of stones but to, for the existence of a stone wall being here says to me that this was probably pasture land. And um, so let's go back to 1634, the settlers get here. Now the Native Americans had burned off the tops of a lot of the hills and, and they grew corn. So uh, I guess that was fortunate for the English people who, uh, who came. Um, but um, we had a, a, a unique land system that they brought from medieval England actually. Um, and, and it was it was called the common land system. So you people were given a house in town, uh, a lot for their house, but but they shared the land around the town. It was called the commons, and uh, this the hills were probably where uh, they would put the cattle and the sheep. Um, they would have other easier, to, uh, more accessible spots for their for their for their um, uh, gardens and growing crops, which they certainly needed. But after that period of time. Uh, you know, land became more spare, sparse and, and harder to get, uh, obtain, and some of the farmers probably went up to, to the hills. And it just, it's just amazing to think about um, the rocks that they had to move uh, to, to try to farm this, this soil up here. And what they found pretty quickly was no matter how many rocks they moved, the next year there'd be more rocks. Well, why is that? Because the ground freezes and, and it pushes rocks up. And then this, as the silt, the soil, the gravel, sand, kind of settles down around the hole where it got pushed up, the rocks, they, they tend to rise every year. And every year they had to bring more and more rocks out of the field. So eventually, in the, by the, uh, by the, after the Revolutionary War in 1800s, a lot of the farmers actually began moving out to Ohio and even further out west. But it leaves some beautiful trails for us here. And I also notice that we're... We're no longer in the pine forest. I see one white pine over there. There's no pitch pines at all. Uh, these are mature hardwood trees, beech, beeches, ashes, oaks, um, some maples in there. Along the way, you'll see these trail markers. This, this is number four. Um, I think some of the maps might show you where those are. There's a QR code on, on the, on the, that's tacked into the bottom of each one and uh, I believe that they, they all uh, go to the same, the same spot but uh, they'll take you to the town's open space uh, program or to the Cayman farm if you, once we get over there uh, where you can read more about the place you're at. Um, what we're looking across at here is, is the hills looking towards Topsville. This is, this is Turner Hill and um, so you're all probably familiar with the Turner Mansion up there. And, and since I moved to town uh, 20 years ago, uh, there's, a, there's a, a whole city of houses up there now. Uh, so you can see those. And, um, and so Turner Hill is just about the same elevation 
um, as, as the hill that we're on right now. And uh, they're all, you know, 240 feet, and then there's, of course, shorter hills in town. So we're looking across the valley at that. There's Turner Hill, little Turner Hills over to the right, I think. And then we're going to walk a little farther around and take a view to the east. This is, this is where you get a choice. Uh, if you only want, want to do uh, just this hill, um, you can continue on the trail and, lo and loop around. Uh, if you want to, to do the, the hike that we're doing today, uh, this is a little connector trail that takes you down to Cayman Farm. And uh, it's, it's uh, fairly steep, but, but, but short. It has the, uh, the map here, shows you Turkey Hill Conservation Area, uh, and uh, uh, it shows you exactly where you are. Each one has all the little numbers on here to show you that for these various signposts. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on just a little bit because there is a pretty nice view looking across to the east and then we'll come back to this point and head down the trail. Um, so this is, this is the only uh, part of the trail on Turkey Hill where I see that they put in some nice little boardwalk. So it tells me that this side is wet. And another thing about it being wet is you're gonna have more soil washing down. And sure enough, it gets very gravelly. So whereas where we started, we had a lot of sand outwash. Uh, right in here, this is a very small um, uh, gravel and rocks uh, on this side. And uh, so, you know, you watch your, watch your uh, step and don't twist an ankle while you're in here. We continued on and, uh, around uh, the Turkey Hill Trail, perhaps a thousand feet. Uh, and if we were to continue on about another thousand feet, we would come right back down to the fork where we, uh, right after we started. But I just brought you here because uh, it's another really phenomenal view. And, and I like uh, hiking up here uh, in the seasons when there's no leaves on the trees because uh, the, the leaves will, will block the view during the summer. But we're looking across, there's actually a nice pond and that's just on the other side of Turkey uh, of, of uh, Pine Swamp Road. And then across the way, you see all these hills. Uh, um, when I moved here from the Berkshires, I, you know, I missed the hills, but I take my bike over on Pine Swamp Road and it's just gorgeous to look on, um, you know, to see the hills on both sides. So what we're looking at across here uh, is uh, I see some houses over there, so that might be Cedar, uh, Cedar View Road that comes right up to the top, very close to where I live, on the other side of, of, um, of Topsill Road. And then uh, over to the left we have, um, we have Bush Hill, and there's Scott Hill in there. Uh, looking far in the distance, I'm not sure, I think we're looking out in the direction, direction of Essex. So looking from here, you could, we could be anywhere in Vermont or New Hampshire. It's just wonderful to be here. We made it back to the fork, and now we're going to head over to Cayman Farm. We made it to the uh, to the end of that little connector trail, and so we're we're now at Cayman Farm. So when you get to this point, you have a choice of two ways to go. Uh, if you go left, it takes you up a little hill, and it's a short way back uh, to over to to the entrance of Cayman Farm. Uh, this is the longer way, so of course we're going to take the longer way. I love these signs. Uh, Greenbelt put up these signs, and if you swing around here, you see that you've got an arrow going that way, an arrow going this way, an arrow going that way, and an arrow going that way. It's like the story of my life. It seems like it's all good. Just pick a direction and go find out what's going on. So uh, when you get here, there's a gate, and that's, this is actually uh, part of the land is still being farmed. And so, of course, that's private property, and we don't go in there. If you see, there's a trail over this way. Uh, if we had taken what I refer to as a shorter way in the Cayman Farm, you would have come, come in through here. And then, so what we're gonna do now is take this little trail that takes us over to, to the uh, parking area and the entrance to Cayman Farm. How cool is this? They, they gave us a bench to sit on 
This must be the observation area that I was looking for. Uh, let's just hang out here for a second, take a look at what's ahead of us here. So uh, this is their farm field. And um, during the spring and winter, it's pretty wet down there. I did uh, try to walk across it a couple of times. And uh, that's why we decided to take the high road today. Uh, looking across through there, they showed that the, uh, the Dalbrook uh, estuary, uh, it runs right through there. And then over the top, I, I see houses. Maybe that's uh, Turner Hill, I'm not quite sure. Um, but it's just as scenic as could be, for, especially for living, living in this area. Hmm. Well, we made it to Cayman Farm, and uh, you know, you, you don't have to just hike here. You can stop and sit. There's two benches uh, just for enjoying the view. It's open to the public. Uh, the, uh, they've done a, a great job with, with landscaping, wonderful parking area here, and um, informational sign tells you all about Greenbelt and the Cayman Farm. We started out way up in here somewhere. And, and this is where we are right now. I uh, remember at the beginning of the uh, program, I, I pulled out my phone and I opened a little app called Ride with GPS. It's we were on uh, the right side of, of Pine Swamp Road when you're heading up the hill and that part of Cayman Farm is open to the public, but uh, the farm is huge and uh, Greenbelt uh, acquired all of it and uh, so it, it extends all the way over to the trees over here. You can see some nice uh, vernal ponds. There's probably a lot of peepers coming out really soon. We finished our hike and we even made it back down to the car. But I just wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, up above Cayman Farms, we never really got to see uh, the wetlands, the, the estuary. So where we're standing here is up on Pine Swamp Road, and this will pretty much explain how the road got its name. This is a big swamp that goes well into uh, to, uh, uh, Willowdale State Forest and destruction, and then, it, and then the wetlands just go all the way down behind Cayman Farm and down below the hill uh, where we were walking and, and the, uh, down to the back of, of uh, Linebrook Road, and, and, it, and it empties in into a brook there. Um, uh, so that brook uh, then goes behind uh, the mile, mile Lane playing fields and uh, joins up with uh, into to the reservoir, the Dalbrook Reservoir. And uh, the brook eventually empties into, goes across highway, the highway um, Route 1A. Uh, it becomes the Rowley River or the Eagle River. It changes names quite a few times. Uh, so Bullbrook, Dalbrook, the river, and then eventually into the ocean. And it all starts right here. So thank you for joining me on this hike today. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>